It is Tuesday afternoon in Berlin, 4 p.m. Central European Summer Time, and it's my pleasure to welcome you after some very busy times again to another episode of our Space Cafe 33 Minutes with Paul Lears about is space legal in Estonia and why should you come to Tallinn for Halloween? As always, we truly appreciate your participation and ongoing feedback. We are committed to learning from your input and continuously improving our webinars to make them more engaging and informative for you. I'm Torsten, publisher at spacewatch.global, and we are a Europe-based online platform for information in and about space and new space activities in a geopolitical context. I would like to thank all our private and corporate supporters in 2023 that showed their continuous commitment to keep our independent journalism alive. We really appreciate that. And I know many of you are familiar with our website, our bi-weekly and our daily newsletters and the Space Cafe podcast. So don't miss Space Cafe podcast 91, bridging science and indigenous knowledge with Dr. Laurie Rousseau-Nepton from the Department of Astronomy and Astrophysics at the University of Toronto with our wonderful Markus Moslechner as host. We also have new episodes on our Space Cafe radios, featuring a Space Cafe radio with Katel Olsen in an Andoya space special, with Professor Bertrand Goldman from the International University, and from the World Satellite Business Week in Paris with Stuart Bain of North Star. You can find our audio series wherever you get your podcasts from. Our fan shop is also open for you always because it's just a click away on our website. And if you missed any of our previous web talks, we have an archive available on our web page in the event section. You also can find us on YouTube. So my guest today is someone who wrote for Spacewatch.global about Estonia's space policy. And we spoke a year ago, exactly a year ago in our format. He is truly one of the people and the voices to watch out. He is next generation. I'm super excited to welcome Paul Lears in our Space Cafe today. So let's take that out here and then we see you as well, Paul. So um, Paul is head of space policy at the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communication in Estonia. He has created the Estonian Space Policy and Programme 2020 to 2027. Today, he is working on Estonia's national space legislation and a decentralized e-government solution for space traffic management. So Paul is also the head of the Estonian delegation to the European Space Agency and European Union Space Programme. He has been engaged in various roles in the space sector for the past years. In 2008, 2008 Paul joined the first Estonian satellite project, Aztec Cube 1, and leads the development of mechanical systems. After the successful launch of the S Cube 1 in 2013, Paul continues as an entrepreneur in the space sector until 2016 when he joined the ministry. And since Ju July 2023, Paul is the chair of the Administrative and Finance Committee of the European Space Agency. So thank you very much for your very prestigious time today. Paul, welcome in our Space Cafe again. How are you doing today? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Thorsten, for the wonderful introduction. And of course, I'm doing very well. This time yeah. I'm here in uh, Tallinn. Wonderful. Yeah, that's last time, last year we, we talked when you were in Paris, but as you just told me, you're coming out of a long hour meeting or today as well. So it's not boring on your end. So let's dive into that. Last year, we spoke about the space and cyber in Estonia. Let's start with the first part of our theme is space legal in Estonia. So where are we on that? Yes, uh, space is, let's say, a gray zone here in Estonia still. And soon space will be legalized. So today in Estonia is one of the European and uh, countries who has no space law, but uh, we are working on that. Uh, not having a space law, it gives for the industry, academia, and um, and 
also the government sector some kind of a fear. We don't know what happens with our investments. So, for example, if a company starts a space project to develop their own satellites, so what happens if the government changes and uh, what are the liabilities and opportunities for these companies? And therefore, to have this legal certainty is one of the reasons why we are now working on the space law. Today, uh, what is he here in Estonia, but you also mentioned uh, in the introduction, is the Estonian space policy, which was created in 2020. So it has been uh, already around for uh, uh, more than three years. And it gives a long term vision. It gives uh, guidelines, basically. Uh, and according to these guidelines, we are investing our uh, money to ESA and to national activities. And it gives some sort of an idea to the uh, entrepreneurs, to the industry, to the academia, in which direction we are developing, in which direction we are choosing the, our programs, so they know how to plan. And now, now is the next step. What we have to do is exactly to give the legal certainty. They know that if we are starting investing millions to the space domain, I hope it happens. It looks uh, very promising then uh, the government will not overnight change the mind uh, what should we do and uh, what should we not do so is the space policy is that um supported by the people in um in estonia so how is the, the, the feeling on that uh and i will talk about what is the, the, the general vision late, later on so don't don't spoil us on that so but but how is that perceived are people behind it i think so um, many things have changed uh, after it so before uh, 2020 uh, it was very unclear what we were doing and it was basically more or less we tried to survive every day mm -hmm. a new challenge came in we were just uh, uh, dealing with them, but it gives a long-term plan. And uh, what we have, what we are seeing today is that if you have a clear plan, what you want to do, if you have clear programs, clear activities, it's much easier to attract new investments and also mm -hmm. raise uh, capital from the government. And uh, now the Estonian invest investment to the space domain is basically skyrocketing, and so it gives more visibility and understanding what is space what why are we doing it and uh, yeah so i think the first step for every country is to have a clear strategy and not only a strategy clear activities clear plans uh, what you are doing and in which direction you are going yeah germany just renewed uh, or released the renewed uh, strategy um I think a month ago, something like that, or not even a month ago. Um, so in it's it's heavily debated. Um, but that's another story, and we covered that in our programs already. Let's focus on Estonia. So tell us more about your planning for the next step for the Estonian national space law. So and uh, you alluded already on the uh, securing in investment, but all, maybe you can shed a light also on how the academia and industry, the the startups, seen that because they are backs and forth, yeah, because a, a law limits you in your freedom. Yeah, exactly. So 10 minutes ago, I just finished a four hour meeting of our uh, working group or national working group for the space law. So I'm very into the discussions uh, right now. But before I, I tell about the next step, maybe I will jump back a few, mm -hmm. few years. And the idea to work on the space law, it started in 2017, 2018, that actually, yes, we should think about the national space law and we should start working on it. And back then it wasn't really received here in the ministry that they have actually, we have to do it. And uh, then for two years, it was more or less a topic uh, um, where I was talking about, but no one really cared. <laughs> and uh, but it was exactly i think it's a very it was a necessary time so i was able to go around listen what others have done i read other national space laws and interested uh, listen to the interesting discussions and it helped to develop the idea why estonia should have a space law further and uh, 
what's the real benefit of having a space floor and to have the real understanding of, of all the back, background uh, knowledge, right? And in 2020, exactly when the COVID started, I somehow got more time. I was sitting at home. Uh, so it, it was the real starting point when I started developing uh, and working on the national space law. And now in 2023, uh, we really kicked off the work uh, on the uh, law. Uh, we have a working group uh, in uh, which representatives from different government agencies, industry and academia. And it helps a lot now uh, to really accelerate and have the law ready, hopefully then uh, in spring ready means that we from the minister side have the text and the content ready but of course then it has to go to the uh, to the parliament and uh, what is what's the current status is that uh, we have the first uh, first drafts of the law uh, ready and we are debating about uh, various definitions about uh, uh, what is a space uh, object exactly, how should we define it, and uh, uh, the whole process of the registration, liability questions. It's very interesting uh, uh, discussions that we are having. And one thing I really love about this group is that more or less we can always uh, achieve a consensus in the discussion that we cannot, we don't have, a, at least so far, I hope it continues like that, that the government and the industry and academia, we have the basic common understanding. And uh, the main, I think, common understanding is that uh, the space law, the Estonian space law, uh, is there to help and accelerate innovation and uh, not to stop it. The easiest way is, of course, to close all the space activities down and then it's done. Uh, but I think no one will benefit uh, out of that by the end of the day. And so, therefore, we are really looking into uh, into these opportunities, how, how to enable, for example, R&D activities, how to enable student activities, uh, innovation more in general, and uh, not to build roadblocks, but uh, just help space exploration and uh, R&D activities to accelerate more. And I think it's uh, um, it's it, it is very very important uh, here and. Uh, this approach helps also to inspire why should we have a space law and um, I think everyone also all the student satellite projects and uh, uh, in industry uh, knows exactly why we need a space law and the question is not there anymore so the understanding is uh, common. And I just listened to what you said and found it interesting observation that while COVID, you as an engineer, you have an engineering background, don't you? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Start to uh, to work on a on a space law that is for some people really in ac across a few engineers ac across. But it's a right. Yeah. It's the right approach because uh, I as an engineer and also someone who was uh, there for the first Estonian satellite. Uh, I know exactly how the process works yeah. from the practical side and later also <clears throat> being part of the industry, you know what's really going on and what matters. And I'm not myself writing the law. I don't want to do it. We have therefore a professional law firm who are doing it. So the main question is, I as engineer uh, exactly know what's necessary for how to yeah. accelerate innovation and do something really cool, as I have always said. And then I have to explain it, ask the right question to the lawyers. So how legally can we do it? Yeah, and therefore, right. um, I think the, the the easiest or the best way to how to write the space law is, I think that it's, uh, you need a case for it. You need really why we need it. And it cannot come only that, okay, it's, a legal matter. No, it, right. it is not. It's so, somehow to how to help innovation and uh, economy and uh, space ecosystem more in general. And the approach, I think, it's uh, it it really matters how you start uh, the discussion about the space law. Interesting. How big or how many people are in this stakeholder uh, dialogue in, involved? So how is it, how big is the group that found this consensus in the last days? Yeah, it's uh, it's a wonderful about Estonia. It's ten people. Okay. 
it's a, it's around uh, ten people, so it's mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, very good to uh, to have this discussion. So of course, it, if it goes bigger, fifty, let's say, it will be much more difficult. But of, of course, it's the working group but opinion. Later in the next uh, month, we will also have public discussions. But I think that um, we will manage them as well. So because everything what we are doing is. Uh, uh, for the greater good and uh, not blocking but enabling. I see. If you give the process um, a short review, even where you are today, what can others learn from your process? I think there are maybe four things uh, to learn. And uh, one thing is the first, the basic. Uh, where to start is really to have the understanding uh, why you are working on uh, the space law and what is the real problem that you are solving. Otherwise, if the problem cannot be that, okay, we need a space law, then you are lost. So really to see the benefits. And uh, um, then the second thing is uh, you have to learn to communicate, to have to build a good narrative and the connection to the existing, for example, space policy and uh, to the industry that everyone understands that, okay, aha, here is how Estonia, Estonian industry benefits mm -hmm. out of it. So I think it's um, it's an essential uh, understanding uh, here again. It has to, and then, uh, of course, the first thing I think is to gather a great team. So otherwise, uh, we need to have the right people on board who mm -hmm. really want, want to support, not to block the activity. And uh, the fourth thing is, of course, the best ones uh, is that you have to learn from others. You have to see what others have done. You have all the, where other uh, European countries, for example, and not only European, where they have been successful, if they have been successful, copy it or improve it and uh, also learn from the mistakes, what they have done, what they want to change in the next uh, uh, next years in their law and uh, don't do the same mistake again. So mm -hmm. we are not really inventing uh, a new wheel, let's say. Uh, we have learned, I think, a lot from other uh, European states. And uh, I think it's, and I think, and if you are following these uh, three points I uh, just mentioned, then the execution will happen fast because. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the pre-work is uh, just the understanding why you are doing it and uh, then you have to just lead in this direction. Oh, I, I love when you say it's communication is a, is a big part of it uh, and a very important part to communicate it also to the outside world. But now um, let's come to this point where you give us an, an idea what we can expect from Estonia in space in the in the years to come. So, or as we would call it in in German, so die Katze aus dem Sack lassen. So, let's get out of it. Yes, if I would be tell us home. the big vision. <laughs> yes, if I would do it from my uh, home office, then I would really take the cat and uh, throw it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, not throwing. No, <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I'm not doing it. So, uh, so one of the main okay. The Estonian space sector has been growing really rapidly in the last um, last years, and we have a number of very good Estonian space companies. The main challenge what we are facing today is that we don't have a clear, clear champion. There is no, if, if we are now thinking about different countries, we know that, okay, this company is the le leader in, uh, in this country for space. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the challenges that we don't have this huge uh, Estonian space company, and uh, it is something uh, I'm every day thinking how to do it, how to change it, and I think we are going into the right direction. And um, so the main focus today uh, for me as a policymaker is how to create an environment which helps these companies to grow, and uh, therefore uh, one of the activities, of course, we talked already, is the space law how to give the companies and private capital the um, certainty how to, how to invest and why to invest. And uh, what we are doing, uh, of course, cybersecurity, one of the big topics here, we have started uh, uh, a project uh, to develop uh, space cyber ranges, really, so we can help Estonian uh, 
industry to di discover new markets and uh, especially in cybersecurity where we are good at here on ground but also discover the space space domain and if you're talking now more about um, uh, more about uh, ecosystem or in, uh, environment then uh, for example we are doing many student activities now uh, we are um, helping to uh, sending Estonians uh, to be a national trainee at the European Space Agency and uh, fostering also other opportunities uh, where we can so growing the human resources and it's uh, if you want that the, the industry grows and uh, therefore we need to have more uh, more people of course active in the in the space field That's accelerating cool. the student activities so that there will be, more, will be more student satellite projects maybe not only satellite but also launch uh, small rocket or uh, yeah. uh, rover projects and uh, also hopefully we will have in the next years uh, more space tech related uh, master courses in the university so it's a common it's it's a very wide uh, wide area what we are developing but in the next years i think we will see more young people in estonia active in uh, in the space domain and uh, a bit more let's say even more better environment than we have it today and we will see in the next years hopefully one new champion coming out uh, in the space domain great good luck for that um we we will report of that or uh, absolutely and and stick on it but now let's talk in the second half you also about the second part of our theme today why should you come to Tallinn for Halloween that's a good question Halloween is not the Estonian uh, okay. holiday let's say but uh, internationally it's very very well known and uh, November in Estonia is also it's gray it's not beautiful it, it is maybe like Halloween it's something horrible and uh, what we have discovered is that uh, but if outside it's horrible it's better to be inside and uh, it's easier to organize conferences and workshops so we will offer um, the audience something uh, intellectual you don't have you don't want to sit somewhere under the tree outside but you want to listen to interesting discussions and be part of the conference so therefore it's the best time in Estonia to organize a conference so uh, you, everyone sticks in the room and listens to the interesting panels so one of the reasons is that uh, for the third time we are o o organizing uh, the software defined space conference which will happen this year again in Tallinn um, the venue it will be just awesome it's in old town a very historical building and uh, I think for everyone visiting the uh, event it's uh, really enjoyable and in addition to that so now why exactly for Halloween uh, on the pre-day on the evening of the pre-day there will be a special Halloween uh, space Halloween party where all the participants are encouraged to wear their um, uh, their space company or uh, institution depending where you're coming from swag so it will be a real this kind of a space uh, space Halloween event. Of course, Star Wars is also welcome. <laughs> okay, you're really putting it to the to the next um, level. So, um, you mentioned the software defined our space conference, and I like how you you framed it uh, from the from the weather condition and the the time of the year. You really are a true politician now. Um, <laughs> Um, you, you are running the conference uh, now for the third time, if I'm not mistaken. So what are the last year's experiences? And I mean, you mentioned already what will be this year even cooler, but what is the experience from the last year? How was it perceived? It was uh, welcomed very good by the audience. And I think one of the main, uh, what's behind maybe this uh, successful events last last year and uh, uh, two years ago is because we are skipping the slides mm -hmm. and really focusing on the discussion because if you have long powerpoint presentations it's difficult to listen and you, sometimes you just focus on the picture or whatever and having panel discussions uh, which are um, 
not too long. They are, uh, let's say, short or uh, and also there are not no power panel discussion with let's say seven panelists or no yeah. there are small talks with uh, maybe two three four uh, panelists and it really it, it's more interactive and it's easier to uh, follow it's more interesting and also having uh, not only high level there, in some events we have all very high level uh, uh, speakers no it doesn't matter the content matters yeah. and having both a mix of high level and expert uh, level in during the event and um, i think it's it's necessary and it, it makes it more interesting for the audience to follow and having also the mix of technical and uh, legal background and to have different understandings and uh, what's going on and what are the opportunities and in which direction the space domain is going what we have learned from the last last year is that uh, the audience is interested more in practical practical experience so something even more to take with them if they're going home and uh, so earlier we had it only a two-day event now we are going for the we are growing and there are three days so on the first day uh, there are different workshops and uh, work workshops cover this more practical hopefully in future we will go even more hands-on so you will come to the conference and learn more something more about space cyber security about software development of, about some legal things so this time we are experimenting with the different workshops and uh, see how to really the audience can uh, can take something uh, something with what 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 workshops are, will that be? Can you give us a glimpse on yeah. that? For example, one workshop will be about Estonian national space law. So okay. uh, to have a better understanding what we are doing exactly, so we can go more right. into deep discussions. Uh, uh, also, maybe open some open points where we don't know, we don't have a solution yet, and to have the mm -hmm. discussion with the audience. So you can really coming to the conference, you will get a better understanding where we are and uh, maybe you can also give us some ideas and uh, later in the Estonian space law there is something what uh, you were thinking about and you can contribute to discussion right yeah. then there will be a very interesting uh, workshop about uh, US uh, regulatory systems for EU stakeholders so if you are a European company and interested uh, to start a business in the US which is common I think yeah. uh, so you will get the understanding how uh, entering this US market will work. I think it's also very, it doesn't matter, is, is it uh, cybersecurity to software development domain or something else? I think it's a very interesting to know, uh, especially in the space domain, uh, what are the challenges and uh, what should you do? Then, of course, there is, uh, since space traffic management is one of my favorite topics, then one Estonian company is uh, developing space traffic uh, uh, coordination monitor and uh, there will be the company will present uh, present their work what they have done so you will ha have a, maybe a better understanding about uh, space traffic management and how uh, should it work in uh, in the future also a very interesting uh, workshop i'm looking uh, to is in orbit demonstration where we are talking really about ex uh, ex experience on uh, in orbit demonstration of uh, cyber security and uh, uh, what has uh, what have people ex experts done in their research and uh, really practical examples? I think it will be one of the. Uh, if you are not into the legal workshops, then definitely this workshop is something you should uh, look mm -hmm. forward. And uh, there will be a cyber range uh, workshop as well, so you have a better understanding what is a space cyber range, mm -hmm. uh, how the cyber security exercises uh, make it work. Mm -hmm. So it's a very Wide area against from legal wide range. Yeah. yeah, it's it's interesting. You you said something uh, earlier when I talked about the um the working group for the for the space law. You said you said uh, it's very Estonian. We're just a few people, and I think that also will count here for the conference. Even with international participants, it's still on a manageable level. So where people can raise their voice without talk down by the loud voices correct 
Exactly. So the workshops during the panels in the conference, of course, it's a dialogue or um, depending, it's a discussion where you are more encouraged to listen to. In the workshops, it's more about asking uh, the questions. So we will uh, hopefully uh, all the questions, all the workshops will have this where the audience can uh, can also have a dialogue with uh, the presenters and uh, let's see how it works. And uh, in uh, one year, we will it will be even uh, even more better i think okay. um one of the topics i i read in the in the program was called the lessons from the ukraine can you give us a glimpse what it will mean well, it's a very it's one of the most interesting and most difficult um, uh, topics uh, during this conference since uh, i have been also contact in contact with uh, some of the friends in ukraine but as you can understand they are Today, they are not willing to share that much mm -hmm. about really what's going on. And uh, because you understand really well, as if you are in a situation, then uh, you don't want to uh, talk about your uh, real lessons learned. Yeah. And I think the topic, uh, it's one of the topics we will, uh, we will have every year in the conference to learn what has been the le lessons uh what have been the lessons uh, from ukraine and what we can learn for the space domain what how can we improve it and uh, the panel will be moderated by michael dick michael has been uh, attending the conference already in the in the past year and he is the deputy commander of the estonian um defense force cyber command so he really, really knows what he's talking about and he has also promised to really bring the best uh, best lessons learned from Ukraine, what we uh, what we can do today. So definitely, I think it's a panel and a discussion to look forward uh, to see what, because we know all the use of um, uh, Starlink terminals in, the, in, in Ukraine and many other things. Uh, so I think it's something to learn, something to look forward and um, definitely having Mikkel as uh, the from Estonian Cyber Command, it already looks very, it, it sounds very cool. As long as you tell me this guy is not just 16 years old, then uh, I'm no. really, okay, good. So it, it's my, okay, it's not polite to talk about the co age of my colleagues, but he's older than me. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm 16, I'm 16, but he's okay. 20. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Um, so you you mentioned it already as as one of the highlights. So, but what other highlights um, are there for you that you see as a highlight? I think again uh, we will we will have the workshops uh, mm -hmm. about in orbit demonstration, and also there will be a, a panel about uh, in orbit uh, demonstration. So it's definitely something to look. Uh, uh, look forward and because having the real experiment uh, experience what has happened um, uh, in the space domain and uh, what are the challenges i think we have to not hide the challenges but we have to talk about it. otherwise there will be no solutions uh, for uh, for them right also as, as i mentioned and the space traffic management is uh, something i'm really looking forward to myself so one of the keynote uh, speakers is from uh, France, Pascal uh, Faucher. Um, he's the chairman of the European Union Space Surveillance and uh, Tracking Partnership. I think it's really something I'm looking forward, to, uh, especially for the first keynote in uh, um, in the morning. Uh, I think he has a very good uh, understanding of the domain and uh, uh, talking about SSD and uh, space traffic management it's uh, it's definitely looking um, looking good already and uh, many other things of course networking the yeah. conference not only to listen to the panels and uh, the keynote speakers it's, it's a part of it but uh, i think the main part is um, is to have to build the community and uh, talk to the different all the participants I'm not sure if I'm able to talk all of you uh, coming to Tallinn. I hope so, but uh, it will be difficult. I will uh, give uh, my best to achieve it. And again, uh, having all this content 
in uh, two three days it's just mind-blowing um yeah it's nice 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 so you talked about um stm solution and i'm i'm very curious and i mean you mentioned um pascal uh for he, he is absolutely great i i really um admire his work and um seen him on various uh, keynotes and that's really something to look forward but talking about estonia and stm um i mean will we see at one stage radars in the country or how will you participate or contribute to stm or even eu sst it's a good question um i'm hopefully maybe at somewhere in the future we will have some radars but it's not uh, my goal uh, to have uh, have radars here, but if it happens, I'm not against it, right? Okay. Um, the main uh, main main position of Estonia here um, is that uh, Estonia is very very well known for e-governance, and we know exactly how to build these type of services. It's not just you know a coincidence that one of the Estonian companies is presenting presenting uh, the um, talk. Uh, workshop during the workshop about the results of their work to build uh, such a platform and here we see that the Estonian experience uh, Estonian uh, experience in e-governance and exchange of information can be very useful not only for us here in Estonia but also on the Euro European and international mm -hmm. level and uh, hopefully uh, the Estonian space law um, will be one of the examples also how to do it so um, my this, let's say vision for the next years is that if the Estonian space law is ready we can also have maybe some first uh, demonstration how space traffic management could work at, at least on the national level how the exchange of information between the satellite operators and the government will work so it's also one of the interfaces i'm uh, uh, interested how to integrate uh, space traffic management into uh, national space law and uh, also uh, accelerate the discussion, uh, grow the discussion here in Europe and on the international level. Because if, if you are talking about space traffic management, it is exactly a mix of doing a policy, law, and also a technical solution. And uh, so it's, it's exactly my background now these days. And I hope that we can uh, uh, contribute something to. Uh, to the space domain now. No, I'm. You have me on the on the hook, so I'm I'm looking forward to come to, to Tallinn, and I have to admit uh, it it will be my first time in Tallinn, so um, I will enjoy the city and um, yeah, I mean the program sounds fantastic, and there will be a lot of learnings, and for us we will do a number of interviews and talk to people and get more information out of that. Thank you very much for for your time today. And I'm jumping now over to what our audience can expect on, on our end. And I'm looking forward to seeing you then soon in Tallinn. Thank you, Thorsten. And uh, looking forward to see you and also all the participants to this web talk in Tallinn and uh, to have a, have a beer and chat with you here. <laughs> Good. So, and before we come to the beer here, um, to our audience, um, so what can you expect from us? Um, you see, we have lowered our number of um online talks uh, over the last months due to the high level of or, or the density of of real or uh, in-person space events. So tomorrow on the 18th here in Berlin. We will see the second German Space Congress with the presence of our German chancellors, various ministers. So that will be a quite interesting discussion, especially as we just uh, announced our uh, national space strategy. And no, we still don't have a, our space law, but we are working on that. And there's, there will be always hope that that will come one day. So on the 19th, um, we will do the news part for the um space bar by astro agency um again next week we will be in um oslo for the spaceport norway to see what's new in in norway and many things happening there as well in parallel as you might have seen our reports or my reports from andoya um two weeks back 
on the 26th, we will have hopefully our next Space Cafe Israel by our wonderful Medat Payente. Due to the current situation, um, we will see if we can make that and we keep you updated. And then on the 31st, uh, what is Halloween or for us Re Reformation Day here in, uh, in Berlin and in Brandenburg to the 2nd of November, we will be in Tallinn at the Software Defined Space Conference as you could hear in great detail um, all the wonderful things that will happen from Paul. And then two weeks later, we might see each other in Bremen at the Space Tech Expo. So another full month of events coming up. So, and that's almost from my end here. All events are going to be online on Eventbrite, in our case, the two um, space cafes. As always, we would like to hear your feedback. So please check in with us on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Don't forget to sign up for our daily or bi-weekly newsletters. And if you like to treat yourself with something special, become a space washer today or help us in this supporter program. Thank you, Paul, for this very interesting and inspiring talk and being my guest again. Thanks to the entire team behind the scenes for doing their great job week by week again. Hope are you all will stay safe and stay healthy. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you tomorrow, the next days, the next weeks, whenever. In the meantime, visit our website and follow us on social media. And don't forget, become a space watcher. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.